Hello and welcome to a new episode of Geek Lunch Me. I'm your host Chris as usual. This is the fourth and final part where I build the Revel 172 scale Razor Crest from Star Wars The Mandalorian. Here you can see all the parts um, that I painted uh, last episode plus a few more and the interior. I'll show you what I did with those in a second. Uh, first of all, this is the front landing leg. This got painted the same way as the sort of uh, as the fuselage. It's um was undercoated, primed in black, and then uh, silver on top. Same, these are the two uh, rear uh, landing legs, all um, then just given a coat of uh, Nuln oil. Uh, this is the guns at the front, done exactly the same. So just black primer. And then onto the uh, cockpit. I spent far, probably far too much time on this cockpit than I should have, seeing as you won't see all of that, especially all that bulkhead in the back there, in that little compartment, you won't see any of that. Um, this was just all painted by hand, just in greens and blues, uh, maroon for the uh, sort of ready maroon colour for the chairs, um, and then all given uh, a black wash, um, and then that was rubbed off a bit. Um, the decals were applied uh, with a bit of microsol, uh, always use on them, just softens the decals, slightly melts them, um, basically makes the mould uh, to uh, the, uh, the plastic underneath better, makes them look like they're not uh, printed, uh, makes them look like they're not decals, um, so they're not printed on. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the space toilet out the back there painted in chrome. So all of this was just done straight on top of the uh, of the black primer. Um, so just with greys um, and a black wash, um, some sort of mud on the bottom there. Um, exactly the same for the interior walls. I didn't bother as much with these because you ain't going to be able to see these hardly at all. That's uh, the lights, the white lights there are just more decals put on. Everything else is just hand painted, as I said. Um, given a black wash, just some really watered down paint. Uh, and then when you assemble it together, this just glues together, just follow the instructions exactly like this. You know, as I say, you, you can't even hardly see hardly any of the interior, um, even as it is before it's even gone inside the ship. So yeah, that just glues together quite easily, goes together really well. And then it just put it inside the fuselage, which we have here. As you can see, I've stuck uh, all the landing gear on. I decided to put the landing gear down. I prefer the silhouette of it. Um, the Razor Crest is really good from the front, the back, um, where it just tapers off. I don't like the design as much um, and it's quite it's quite blocky when it's in flight and it's not got the, uh, the landing gear down then um, yeah I, I find it uh, the, the, say the back end of it um, not as interesting as silhouette so um, this is the uh, the ramps go on and they're sort of designed well they're sort of designed so you can have them up or down but they it's a bit like um it's a bit like a toy hinge they've designed if I'd realised what it was, I probably would have cut off those hinges and um, got some plastic card or something and made up my own versions. Um, because once you put, once you glue the sort of uh, hydraulic struts in place, um, then you can't make them go up and down anyway. Uh, and you get a slight gap left. I say it looks slightly like a toy. Um, yeah, in hindsight, if I did another one, I would definitely uh, stick some plastic card on, little strips of plastic card or something, um, so it doesn't look uh, with with the gaps that the hinge leaves. Application of the glue. Um, same as before and then that entire section just drops straight in and holds uh, it's cleverly designed just holds in then all the landing gear um, so all the landing ramps um, the two at the front and the one on the back there um, I've decided to go with uh, the, the, the ramp at the front one of them down and the uh, and the rear loading ramp down and, and the other front ramp up uh, just applying more glue here this is where you then just stick the uh, the top on as well So just the thin, uh, the thin glue all around the edges. And that goes on quite easily as well. I was quite surprised how easily the whole kit goes together. Uh, I may have said before, um, if you have painted over bits first before you glue them, make sure you scrape the uh, paint off using a knife. Uh, otherwise you're basically sticking two very thin layers of paint together uh, which is liable then just to come apart in the future. This is some quick, yeah, this is the Nuln oil that Citadel do but any backwash will do. I just wanted to get it into all those sort of those bits on the top there where they're quite deeply recessed um, it just brings out all the details nicely um, before we do an actual weathering pass. This I've speeded up, this as you'll know if you watched my previous video uh, masking is the thing I hate the most. Um, I decided to just mask off a few individual panels and then uh, paint them all in different shades just to give some um, variation uh, throughout the ship before we start the actual um, weathering um, as it is. So as you can see I'm just masking off um, a couple of individual panels. I 
and then I've got some various different shades of silver and um, putting on some of the matte coat as well in various places uh, just uh, so it will refract the light differently and just um, just break up the surface uh, which is what they do to give scale uh, to, uh, to the models uh, in the films things I've just done that one small panel there you can see I've done three different panels just on the top which I'll then uh, I then sprayed with various different silvers as you can see I've got here uh, shining silver uh, from the army painter that's um, aluminium or aluminum depending on where you're watching uh, that's a Vallejo model air that is some old Citadel that's uh, room fang steel and then another army painter the gun metal just slightly darker so as I just did these in different uh, on, on the different panels and uh, I think I've got the yeah that's just the uh, Tamiya that's just the matte spray um, just to seal and just to clear um, which will just, just the actual, that actually probably work best um, in giving a different appearance to the panels. This is then just some um, black wash uh, used for the weathering. I was going to use the Tamiya uh, uh, panel accent one they do, um, but trying to get a hold of it at the moment in the UK here is really difficult. Um, it seems any you know, places that seen had it I had to import it from abroad. It was really expensive, so I went with this. which I found already had uh, and just applied it in places and then just um, rubbed it back using a uh, cotton bud. Um, which was I dipped it in airbrush um, flow improver um, and not I, I did a little test if uh, airbrush cleaner actually took sort of the paint off and the paint beneath the clear coat that I put on o o over the top of the um, the chrome alclad and just literally removed everything down to the down to the plastic so I used the air flush I used the airbrush flow improver I should say and um, and that worked to treat it just left um, all just just left the uh, the wash in the uh, in the actual panel lines there and just picked them all out nicely which went really well and then as i were went on and weathered the ship further um if there were any uh, you know places that were it was too dirty uh putting like a lot of dirt on the engines as if it was like grime and oil uh, coming up some of the uh sort of uh areas there um if it was too much you just go in with that cotton bud just dipped in a bit of uh airbrush flow improver and it just um just gradually worked it all the way back uh, to the to the chrome paint, which was really handy in helping, um, yeah, just make sure I didn't want to go overboard. Uh, the engines are the dirtiest part of of the ship. And this is the Tamiya Weathering Master, uh, the soot uh, one I used. It's sort of like um, it's more like women's makeup, like uh, yeah, like uh, like mascara basically. So the black one in the middle uh, and the one on the right, the um, the sort of orangey brown one, which is the rust. I did use parts of that, um, and you just use the applicator there and just. You know, just just apply it and you, you know you build up several layers so in places i built it up too much um i also did try airbrushing some of these lines on but um, as i said in my previous video my airbrush is rubbish and um uh, my compressor does not allow me to change the pressure either so it was just spraying out really thick lines um luckily i then uh, uh, managed to use uh say the cotton buds dipped in the flow improver uh, to take some of that back uh, you can see on the back section of the top of the ship there um, that was where I airbrushed and some uh, far too much grey paint, you know, dark grey paint come out. And as you can see there, I've then used um, that technique just to take some of it back and leave sort of mottled streaking effect. So it sort of turned out almost sort of a sin serendipitous um, effect in the end. But yeah, so you can see I'm just gradually building up the layers in places uh, where sort of soot and grime has come out of the engine. Uh, you can also see there uh, those back engine parts where I sprayed them with clear blue and then some clear yellow on top to make it look like the uh, the metal uh, where it gets heated by the engine and you get that bluing effect um, I probably should have used an orange instead of the yellow and I probably put it on when the blue was still wet so it sort of went a slight greeny color um, but it's not too bad and I did knock it back a bit with um, I think that was the Agrax Earthshade uh, sort of brownie um, wash uh, that Citadel do I put some of that on top of the green and that's taken it slightly back and made it into a, uh, a sort of bronzy color um but yeah that's a nice effect to do so i used the use the clear the translucent paints um with, with the blue that was just um, out of the airbrush onto those bits and it gives a nice effect as you can see i'm just building up more layers just of the, uh, the brown and the black i use pretty much every weathering technique going on here in a minute you'll see um a sort of sponge stippling effect as well uh, I just put paint on um, with quite a large brush and then wiped it back with a piece of rag. 
uh, there you can see sort of the engine at the bottom there um, getting quite dirty you can see where I've used um, the airflow improver to take it back and um, all the streaks sort of go obviously from front to back as, it, like, as if they get picked up where ships moving for atmosphere there's this looking at reference pictures there's that one there on, on the bottom of that back piece that goes the other direction which is presumably like, you know, like a laser hit um, from behind um, this is stippling some dark grey paint on just a bit of sponge and um, wipe most of the paint off um, just gently stipple it on when you say use use reference photographs from the internet or from balls in the um the actual show i did quite a bit as well uh it's just sort of almost like a mottled effect over the whole ship um so you can go as, do as much or as little weathering as you want last thing i did was to uh, glue the uh, canopy glass in place using the contact a clear adhesive uh, which obviously dries clear so it doesn't uh, go white or anything like that like some gl uh, glues do um and that's it uh, enjoy some uh, beauty shots of the ship